Evet. Şu anda YouTube'da yayınımız başladı. İsterseniz bir kontrol edin. Adresi de hemen gönderiyorum ben size. Evet. Şu anda YouTube'da yayın. Evet, YouTube adresimiz de bu. İsterseniz buradan da izleyebilirsiniz. Şimdi bugün e, omurgalılara bakıyoruz. Yani e, vertebralılar. Nedir vertebralılar? Şimdi hayvanlarda e, hayvan Hayvanlar Kingdom'ında, Animal Kingdom'da bir takım filmlere bakmıştık. Ancak bu filmlerin hepsi... Evet, bugün bu OBS'de çok garip şeyler oluyor. Başımıza daha neler gelecek bilmiyorum. Ekran paylaşımı diyelim. Ekran paylaş. Evet. OBS'yi tekrar bir kontrol ediyorum. Evet. Pardon. Sorun olan yer OBS değil. Bizim LMS sistemi. LMS sistemi. Evet. Şu anda beni görüp duyabiliyor musunuz? Her şey yolunda mı? Evet, o zaman bir an önce başlayalım. Yoksa bu sistemlerin neler yapacağı belli olmaz. Evet, bugün omurgalıları görüyoruz. Hayvanlar için de önemli bir grup. Neden önemli bir grup? Çünkü bizim de dahil olduğumuz grup. Ee, omurgalıları görüyoruz. Omurgalılardan sonra da e, insanı bir omurgalı e, olarak değerlendirmeye çalışacağız. Evet, bu sefer de fare çalışmıyor. Çok güzel. Şöyle geçersek. Evet. Evet, sanırım içinizden birileri bugün online ders yaptığım için beddua etti. O yüzden garip garip şeyler geliyor başımıza. Evet, şuradan laser pointer da alarak alırsak. Evet, şimdi vertebralılar, omurgalılar nedir, ne yapar, nasıl hayvanlardır ona bakalım. Uh, half a billion years of backbone. So, vertebrae means backbone. And nearly <coughs> for half a billion year. Uh, vertebrates are on the earth early in Cambrian period about 530 million years ago and, and <coughs> a new variety of invertebrate animals inhabited in earth's oceans the type of animals give rise to vertebrates one of the most successful groups of animals <coughs> the animals called vertebrates get their name from vertebrae Vertebrae means series of bones that make up of backbone. Important what vertebrae in is. So first you have to be able to describe the vertebrae. Vertebrae is series of bones that make up backbone. All right, this is one of the oldest uh, vertebrate fossils. One line of vertebra vertebrates colonized land 365 million years ago. There are about 52,000 species of vertebrates, including largest, or largest organisms ever to live on the Earth. Vertebrates have great disparity, a wide, ra wide range of difference within the group. Chordates have a Uh, notochord and a dorsal hollow nerve cord. So, chordates are the group or filum chordata is the film in which we put the vertebrates in. Chordates, filum chordata, are bilateral animals that belong to the clade of animals known as deuterostomia. Chordates comprise vertebrae, vertebrates, 
and two groups of invertebrates, eurochordates and cephalochordates. So, uh, you will remember last week uh, we have seen some uh, films of animals. So, now we are talking about another film, which is film chordata. Under film chordata, uh, there are three groups. The first one is vertebrates. Uh, we can call it, I think it is a, a subfilum, a subfilum vertebrata. But except for vertebrata, there are two other groups of chordates, which are eurochordates and cephalochordates. Uh, you can look at this uh, time scale in your uh, or, uh, evolutionary tree in your books. Uh, so chordates are here under the chordates, there are craniates, vertebrates, gonatostomes and tetrapods and amniotes. So we will learn about their uh, details today. Now, what is important with chordates? Lungs or lung derivatives, lobe fins, limbs with digits. Okay, this part is important, limbs with digits and amniotic egg. After gaining amniotic egg, the vertebrates evolved to two groups, reptilia and mammalia. But difference of mammalia is milk. Derived characteristics of chordates are some species have some of these traits only during embryonic development. Four key characteristics are seen with chordates, notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, uh, pharyngeal stills or clefts, muscular post-anal tail. So these are key characteristics of chordates. This is a general uh, seam showing, the, uh, showing a chordate. So this is mouth, this is anus, so this is the digestive system. Except for digestive system, there is a structure called notochord and a nerve cord, except for that. Notochord is a longitudinal flexible rod between digestive tube and nerve cord. It provides skeletal support through most of the length of a chordate. In most vertebrates, a more complex jointed skeleton develops and the adult retains only remnants of embryonic notochord. So what is that dorsal hollow nerve cord? The nerve cord is a chordate embryo develops, sorry, uh, the nerve cord of a chordate embryo develops from a plate of ectoderm that rolls into tube dorsal to the notochord. The nerve cord develops into central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord. The origin of head enabled chordates to coordinate more complex movement and feeding behaviors. So that is important importance of having a head. Craniates share some characteristics, skull, brain, eyes and other sensory organs. <clears throat> vertebrates are craniates that have a backbone. So what makes vertebrates different is their backbone. So they have all characteristics. Uh, they have all characteristics of uh, chordates, film chordata, but plus they have a vertebrae. What is vertebrae? That is backbone. During Cambrian period, a lineage of craniates evolved into vertebrates. So vertebrates or uh, vertebrata is a group in the uh, craniates. Craniates are a group in the uh, chordata, film chordata. Vertebrates become, became more efficient at capturing food and avoiding being eaten. Derived characteristics of vertebrates. Vertebrates underwent a second gene duplication into the DLX family of transcription factors. Vertebrates have the following derived characteristics. Vertebrae enclosing a spinal cord, very important. 
and elaborate skull, fin rays in aquatic forms. So these fin rays are exist only in the fish group, uh, on, in the piscas, which means in the fishes. Now, we split the vertebrata into superclasses, superclasses piscas and superclasses tetrapoda. First superclasses is piscas, piscas means fishes, piscas demek balıklar demek, balıklar. Şimdi burayı e, kısaca Türkçe'de söylüyorum. E, hayvanların içinde bir film, en gelişmiş film, kordalılar. En gelişmiş filmlerden bir tanesi kordalılar, film kordata. Film kordatanın altında vertebrata var, yani omurgalılar var. Omurgalıları da önce iki superclasses ayırıyoruz. Bir, superclasses piskes, yani balıklar. İki, superclasses tetrapoda, yani dört ayaklılar. Şimdi balıklara bakalım. So, this is an example for fish. Uh, they have fins. Uh, that makes them different from tetrapoda. That's another uh, fish. Shark eggs are fertilized internally, but embryos can develop in different ways. Uh, sharks is one group of uh, fishes, as you know. Some of them are oviparous, that eggs hatch outside the mother's body. Ovo viviparus, the embryo develops within the uterus and nourished by egg yolk. And viviparus, the embryo develops within the uterus and nourished through a yolk sac placenta from the mother's blood. Alright, that's another <coughs> fish. Now, we split the fishes into two classes. We say it superclasses piscas. There are two classes underneath. One ostage ts, uh, sorry, one chondric ts, two ostage ts. Şimdi e, şöyle düşünün. Aslında şuradan size bir şey açıp beyaz tahta açıp oradan da yazabilirim. Aklınızda daha iyi kalır. Ve şunu biraz daha büyütebilirsek aslında şöyle. Şöyle diyorum. Film kordata. Bunun altında e, vertebrata. Vertebrata'nın altında e, iki superclasses. Bir. Piskes. İki tetrapoda. Tamam. Süper klasis piskes, süper klasis tetrapoda. Şimdi e, balık piskes balıklar. Balıkları iki klasisi ayırıyoruz. Bir <gülüyor> klasis kondriktiyes. Yani kıkırdaklı balıklar ee, ve de iki klasis osteistiyes. Yani e, kemikli balıklar. Şimdi kıkırdaklı balıkların altında kim var? Kıkırdaklı balıkların altında e, köpek balıkları ve vatozlar var. Geri kalan balıkların hepsi Kemikli balıklar. Yani sizin <gülüyor> normalde e, gördüğünüz, balıkçıda gördüğünüz balıkların hepsi kemikli balıklar. Şimdi ikinci grup süper klasis tetrapoda. Bundan da birazdan bahsedeceğiz. Tekrar e, ekran paylaşımımıza dönelim. Aynı anda iki ekran paylaşamazsınız. Peki ekranı paylaşıyorsunuz. E, ekran paylaşımını nasıl geçeceğiz buradan? Acaba ekran paylaşımı? Evet. Şimdi burada gördüğünüz bir kemikli balık. 
Şurada daha önceki e, resimlerde gördüklerimiz ise kıkırdaklı balıklardı. Bu kemikli balık. Şunlar kıkırdaklı balık. Şimdi kıkırdaklı balıklara baktığınızda nasıl ayırt, eder, ayırt edersiniz bunu? En başta e, solungaçlarına bakıyorsunuz. E, solungaç kapağı yoksa e, köpek balıklarında ve vatozlarda solungaç kapağı yok. Dolayısıyla 1, 2, 3, 4 veya 6 tane yarık görüyoruz burada. 4 veya 6 yarık şeklinde ise solungaçlar e, bunlar e, kıkırdaklı balıklar diyebilirsiniz. Başka ayırt edebileceği özellikleri de var. Ama şimdilik sadece bunu bilmeniz yeterli. Evet bu bir vatoz. Bu da bir kıkırdaklı balık. Doğrudan doğruya aslında tiplerine baktığınızda anlayabiliyorsunuz. Bu da bir kemikli balık. Kemikli balıkta bir solungaç kapağı var. Operkulum. Bu solungaç kapağı aslında solungaçlar bu kapağın altında. Her ne kadar tek bir yarık varmış gibi görseniz de bu aslında solungaç kapağıdır. Asıl solungaçlar bunun altındadır. Kıkırdaklı balıklarla kemikli balıkları bu şekilde ayırt edebilirsiniz bundan sonra. Şimdi geçiyoruz. So... Our, our next superclasses is superclasses tetrapoda. Tetrapods are gratostoms that have limbs. Uh, one of the most significant events, events in vertebrate history was when the fins of some lobe, fin, lobe fins evolved into limbs and feet. Evet. Fusion of pervic griddle with the backbone. So these are and also absence of gills except for aquatic species. Ses mi yok? Hemen geliyorum. <gülüyor> evet şimdi duyabiliyor musunuz? Evet o zaman e, tekrarlıyorum tetrapotları. Four limbs, a neck, fusion of pelvic griddle with the backbone and absence of gills except for some aquatic species. E, şimdi one more thing. Ears for detecting airborne sounds. Şimdi tetrapodlar önemli. Neden önemli? Çünkü biz e, e, süper klasis tetrapoda içindeyiz. Yani bizim süper klasisimiz olduğu için tetrapodlar önemli. Bunları bir de Türkçe söylüyorum. Şimdi tetrapod adı üstünde dört ayaklılar demek. Dört tane e, ayakları olan, dört tane ayağı olan hayvanlar. Dört e, ayak ve veya işte dört kol ve bacak diyebilirsiniz. Dört üye diyebilirsiniz. Ve bunların ucunda parmaklar. Dört el ve ayak ve bunların ucundaki parmaklar bir. Birinci ayırt edici özellik. İkinci ayırt edici özellik boyun. Ee, boyun neye yarıyor? Başın e, bağımsız olarak hareket, nispeten daha bağımsız olarak hareket etmesini sağlıyor. Ee, pelvis kemiği e, omurgaya birleşmiştir veya işte leğen kemiğinin omurgaya birleşmiş olması solungaçların olmaması ve de e, seslerin algılanabilmesi için kulakların olması. Şimdi bunlar balıklarda olmayıp da tetrapodlarda olan özellikler. Şimdi e, tetrapodanın içinde de klasisler var. Bunlar neler? Klasis amfibia, e, klasis reptilia, klasis aves ve klasis mamalia. E, şimdi e, Tetrapodların içinde dört klasis var. Bunlardan birincisi iki yaşamlılar, çift yaşamlılar ya da kurbağalar diyebiliriz. İkincisi e, sürüngenler, üçüncüsü kuşlar, dördüncüsü de memeliler. En azından bu şekilde canlıların sınıflandırılmasını bilmeniz gerekiyor. Tabii ki bu klasik sistematiğe göre. Klasis amfibia. Şimdi bu klasislere tek tek bakalım. Klasis amfibia neymiş bu? Amfibian means both ways of life referring to metamorphosis of an aquatic larva into terrestrial adult. So in amphibians the larva live in aquatic environments which means in the water but uh, the adult is terrestrial so it, they live in the on the land. Most amphibians have moist skin gas exchange. These two are important uh, characteristics of amphibians. Amphibians are represented by about 
6,000 species. Evet, bugün ses, görüntü ve ekran paylaşımı defalarca gelip gelecek sanırım. So, uh, there are around 6,000 species of amphibians. Order Uredella includes salamanders, salamanders, which have tails. Order Anura includes frogs and toads which lack tails. Order Apoda includes Cedicians, which are legless and resemble worms. Şimdi, e, Klesis Amphibia dedik. İçinde 3 önemli e, ordo var. Daha doğrusu ordolardan 3 tanesi Yuridela, Anura ve Apoda. Yuridela ordosunun içinde e, Yuridela ordosunun içinde semenderler var. Semenderler neler? Kuyruklu kurbağalar. Yani ee, amfibilerin kuyruklu versiyonları var. Bunları Ordo Yuridela içinde topluyoruz. İkinci Ordo, Ordo Anura. Burada e, kurbağalar var. Kurbağalarında kuyrukları yok. E, yani kuyruksuz formları da var. Üçüncü grup Apoda. Yani ayakları olmayanlar. Bunlar da ayakları olmayan e, amfibiler. Nedir bunlar? Bunların resimlerine bakalım. Üstte so you can see and Uh, a member of order Eurydale, a salamander, order Anura, frogs, and order Apoda. So this is an amphibian. Şimdi bu bir iki yaşamlı, yani kurbağalarla aynı grupta olan bir hayvan. Dolayısıyla amfibilerin içinde kuyrukluları var, kuyruksuzları var, ayaksızları var. Hepsi de amfibi. Fertilization is external in most species and the egg require, require a moist environment. In some species, male or female care for the eggs in their back, in their mouth or in their stomach. Alright, this is an example for tadpole which is, which is kind of larva. This is metamorphosis, during metamorphosis, and this is external fertilization. Amniotes, next group. Amniotes are tetrapods that have terrestrial adapted eggs. What does it mean? Amniotes have a group of tetrapods. Sorry, uh, amniotes are a group of tetrapods whose living members are reptiles including birds and mammals. So, reptiles, birds and mammals are in the group of amniotes. Reptiles, birds and mammals. Three different classes. Derived characteristics of amniotes. Amniotes are named for major derived uh, character of the clade amniotic egg. So they have a special type of egg amniotic egg, their eggs have a, a part which is called amnion. Amnion is membranes, amnion means membranes that protect the embryo. The extra embryonic membranes, amnion, chorion and yolk sac and allantois. All right, these are parts of an amniotic egg. The amniotic eggs of most reptiles are some, and some mammals have a shell. Amniotes have other terrestrial adaptations such as relatively impermeable skin and ability to use the rib cage to ventilate lungs. Classes Reptilia. Next classes. The reptile clade includes Salters, lizards, snakes, turtles, crocodilians, birds, and some extant groups. 
Reptiles, reptiles have uh, scales that create waterproof barrier. Most repti repli uh, rep reptiles lay shell shelled eggs on land. That's an example for a reptile. Most reptiles are ectothermic, absorbing the ex uh, external heat as the main source of body heat. Birds are endothermic, capable of keeping the body warm through metabolism. All right. There are some examples for reptiles. Huge variety, as you can see. Next classes is classes aves, birds. Birds are archosaurs, but almost every feature of their reptilian anatomy has undergone modification in their adaptation to flights. Drive characteristics. Many characters of birds are adaptations to facilitate flight. The major adaptation is wings with keratin feathers. Other adaptations include lack of a urinary bladder, females with only one ovary, small gonads, and loss of teeth. Flight enhances hunting and scavenging, escape from terrestrial predators and migration. Those are the advantages of flights given to birds. Flight requires a great, great expenditure of energy, acute vision and fine muscle control. They all exist in the birds. Alright, in this picture again you can see the adaptations of birds for flight. Next classes, classes Mammalia, which we are classified in. Mammals are amniotes that have hair and produce milk. So, mammalians are amniotes with hair and milk. Mammals, classes Mammalia, are represented by more than five, uh, 5,300 species. Mammals have Mammary glands, which produce milk, hair, a high metabolic rate due to endothermy, a large brain that than other vertebrates of equivalent size, and differentiated teeth. These are important. These are the derived characteristics, derived characters of mammals. Primates, Ordo primata. So primates is an order in classes Mammalia. The mammalian order primates include lemurs, tertiaries, monkeys and apes. Humans are members of ape group, so humans are classified in order primata. Derived characters of primates. Most primate, primates have hands and feet adapted for grasping and flat nails. Other derived characters of primates are larger brain and short jaws, forward-looking eyes close together on the face providing depth perception, complex social behavior and parental care, a fully opposable thumb in monkeys and apes. There are three main groups of living primates, lemurs, loris and potos. Tertiaries and anthropoids, monkeys and apes. The oldest known anthropoid fossils, about 45 million years, years old, indicate that tertiaries uh, are more closely related to anthropoids than lemurs. The first monkeys evolved in old, old world, which means Africa and Asia. The New World monkeys first appeared roughly 25 million years ago. The New World and Old World monkeys underwent, underwent separate adaptive radiations during their many millions of years of separation. 
The other group of anthropoids consists of primates, informally called apes. This group includes gibbons, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, baboons, and humans. Apes derived from old world monkeys about 20 to 25 million years ago. Humans are that's the Humans are mammals that have a large brain and bipedal locomotion. The species human or Homo sapiens is about 200,000 years old, which is very young considering that life has existed on the earth at least 3.5 billion years. Derived characteristics of humans, derived characters of humans, a number of characters distinguish humans from the other apes, upright posture and bipedal locomotion, larger brains capable of language, symbolic thought, artistic expression, and manufacture and use of complex tools, reduced jaw bones and jaw muscles, shorter digestive tract. So these are the derived characters of humans. The human and chimpanzee genomes are 99% identical. Changes in regulatory genes can have large effects. The study of human origins is known as paleoanthropology. Homonins they used to be called hominids, are more closely related to humans than chimpanzees. Paleoanthropologists have discovered fossils of about 20 species of extinct hominins. Hominins originated Africa in about 6 to 7 million years ago. Early hominins show evidence of small brains and increasing bipedalism. There is a misconception that is early hominins were chimpanzees. That's wrong. The correction is hominins and chimpanzees shared a common ancestor. Again, another misconception, human evolution is like a ladder leading direct directly to homo sapiens. That's wrong again. The correct version, the correction is hominin evolution included many branches or coexisting species through only humans survive today. So let's look at the hominins, what they are. First one is, first group is Austro Australopithes. Australopithes are paraphyletic assemblage of hominins living between 4 and 2 million years ago. Some species such as Australopithecus afarensis walked fully erect. Hominins began walk long distances on two legs about 1.9 million years ago. This is called bipedalism. Tool use, another important uh, character of humans, the oldest evidence of tool use cut marks on animal bones is 2.5 million years ago. Early Homo, genus Homo, the earliest Fossils placed in our genus Homo are those of Homo habilis. So Homo habilis is the first hominid, uh, the first Homo uh, species, ranging the age about 2.4 to 1.6 million years. Stone tools have been found with Homo habilis, giving the species its name, which means handy man. Homo ergaster is the second species that was the first fully bipedal, larger-brained hominid. The species existed between 1.9 and 1.5 million years ago. Homo ergaster shows a significant decrease in sexual, sexual dysmorphism, that is a size difference between sexes compared with ancestors. Homo ergaster fossils were previously assigned to Homo erectus. Most paleontologists now recognize these separate species. 
Homo erectus originated in Africa by 1.8 million years ago. It was the first hominin to leave Africa. The next species, Neanderthalensis, Neanderthals or Homo neanderthalensis, lived in Europe and Near East from 350,000 to 28,000 years ago. They were thick boned with larger brain, they breed their dead, and they made hunting tools. Debate is ongoing ab uh, about the extent of which genetic material was exchanged between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. <coughs> All right. Homo sapiens, our species. Homo sapiens appeared in Africa by uh, 195,000 years ago. All living humans are descendants from these African ancestors. Important. I want you to know how many years ago the first Homo sapiens was appeared to what is the origin of Homo sapiens. Şimdi burası önemli. Ee, i̇lk Homo sapiens. Evet. Ee, i̇ki önemli nokta. İnsanlar ilk olarak, daha doğrusu Homo sapiens türü ilk olarak 195 bin yıl önce Afrika'da görülmeye başlıyor. Ve de e, tüm dünyaya bu merkezden yayılıyor. Yani tek merkezde bir yayılım. Dolayısıyla bugün yaşayan insanların tamamı e, Afrika'dan çıkan bu e, Homo sapiens'ten geliyor. Devam edelim. Homo sapiens, okay, what is that the oldest old fossils of Homo sapiens outside outside Africa date back about uh, 115,000 years ago and they are from the Middle East. Humans first arrived to New World sometimes between 15,000 years ago. In 2004, 18,000 years old fossils were found in Indonesia and a new small hominin was named called Homo florensis. Homo sapiens were the first group to show evidence of symbolic and sophisticated thought. In 2002, a 77,000 years old artistic carving was found in South Africa. All right, any questions so far? Buraya kadar sorusu olan var mı? Evet, soru yok. Soru varsa Perkus da bekliyorum. Yoksa 10 dakika ara veriyoruz. Peki 10 dakika ara, 10 dakika sonra hem Perkus hem YouTube tekrar yayın başlatıyorum. <gülüyor>